Well, good afternoon. Down in front, please. Uh, my name is Robert Sumwalt, and I'm a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. And the NTSB investigators have arrived in Biloxi uh, early this morning. In fact, we had one to arrive, uh, one of our investigators arrived last evening from Texas. But we have uh, uh, landed here to begin our investigation into this uh, uh, grade crossing collision that occurred right here in Biloxi. So we investigate all aviation accidents and then selected accidents in other modes of transportation. The, we've, we've brought in a, a full NTSB investigative GO team, and I'll talk about that. When we arrived this morning, we, we started coordinating with the, uh, with the local officials, the uh, City of Biloxi Police Department, and, and the emergency responders, the uh, fire department, uh, as well as uh, just pre preliminary meetings with uh, CSX. Uh, here's the factual information that we have so far, bearing in mind that we've literally just arrived and we're just uh, beginning our investigation. Uh, just to refresh, yesterday at about 2.15 in the afternoon, Tuesday, March the 7th, a Van Hool motor coach operated by Echo Transportation of Dallas, Texas, was traveling northbound on Main Street in Biloxi toward the grade crossing at Maine and Esters, which of course is right here. In advance of the uh, grade crossing, there was a sign that indicated a humped crossing, as we call it, which means low clearance, low ground clearance. There were 49 passengers and one driver on the bus. As the bus traveled over the hump where the railroad track is, it reportedly became stuck on the track. Determining the length that that bus sat on those tracks will be critical to this investigation. Now the train. The train was a CSX freight train en route from New Orleans to Waycross, Georgia. It had three locomotives on the front end, 52 cars of mixed freight, and two crew members aboard. That would be an engineer and a conductor, which is the standard complement for a freight train. As the train is coming eastbound down the track, the crew traced, placed the train into emergency stop when it was about 510 feet prior to the bus. The speed at the time of the emergency brake application, approximately 26 miles per hour. At the time of the collision, the train had reduced its speed to about 19 miles per hour. So at the collision, we're calling it 19 miles per hour. The bus was pushed by the train about 200 feet. We measured it today, so it's right at about 203 feet. Preliminary reports from the first responders indicate there were four fatalities. Those were, of course, the bus occupants. The train crew, to my understanding, was not uh, physically injured. I want to emphasize that we are working alongside and in conjunction with the City of Biloxi Police Department, and we very much appreciate their support and their cooperation. They're conducting their investigation as they normally would do if the feds weren't here, and we're conducting our investigation uh, as we're authorized by Congress to do. So we're, we're operating uh, independent uh, investigations, but we are sharing information. And that's the way we work when we go into, uh, into accidents. The NTSB's investigator in charge for this accident is Pete Katowski. Pete has over 40 years of investigative experience. 
Mr. Katowski is leading a multidisciplinary team of experts, and the team will consist of expertise in the following areas. Uh, the bus operations. We'll be looking at the motor carrier itself. What type of record do they have? We'll be looking at the driver's record, the driver's training, his employment records, his health records. And he's not required to, but we would certainly hope that we could interview him as well. That would give us a, a very important perspective. We've got railroad experts here. We'll, we'll be looking at uh, hopefully interviewing the train crew. Uh, we'll be looking at the signals to see if they were functioning properly. We'll be looking at the crossing gates, again, to see if they're functioning properly. And the overall operation of the train. The highway factors. Uh, there is a hump, um, crossover, and then it drops down. That creates the hump. We're very interested in, in, in measuring that hump, documenting it, surveying it, understand the geometry of that hump. We want to look at the signage and markings that were in place, uh, that were before the uh, 